All right, g'day, hi, and welcome, part two. So things I don't like about the H-string, this H-string. Uh, for the newer H-string players out there, the first thing you're gonna notice with these guitars is the heft of them. Uh, the guitar is really, really heavy. Uh, this thing weighs a ton. It's probably the third heaviest guitar I've ever owned. I'm not sure if my Epiphone Les, 92 Epiphone Les Paul was heavier than this one, or if this is heavier, I think this might actually be heavier. And that guitar was 13 pounds. I have no idea what this thing weighs. <laughs> they say, I think it's like eight or 10 pounds, but it, it I'm sure it varies. Uh, this is like the most solid dense mahogany on the planet. It's really heavy. Uh, but I've also played uh, Epiphone Double Neck, which was 14 or 17 pounds. So, <laughs> but if you had to play this thing for three hours straight standing up, uh, those of you with back problems, you might want to see if you can find a lighter eight string. Uh, because they do, you know, you got more mass in the neck, uh, stuff like that. It's not neck, uh, neck heavy, strangely enough. There's enough mass in the body, but it is a heavier guitar. So there's that. Uh, so obviously a lighter guitar is more preferred than a heavier guitar, but if you want a heavy sounding guitar, mahogany is the way to go. And unfortunately, without weight relief in this guitar, it's like an early Les Paul without weight relief. So it has the heft to it. So that was the first thing. Uh, the next thing is the weird wiring to this thing. Okay, so you got two volumes in a tone. To tell you the truth, a push-pull pot and just one volume would be, make this guitar look really badass. You, you know what I mean? Like, it would just be perfect. Uh, but it doesn't. It has two volumes in a tone. So if it had one more tone, it'd be just like a regular Les Paul. But however, your two volumes, okay, you're, you know, if you're going to blend, you can blend your tone and it works for both pickups. Uh, but if you're going to blend the volumes, you can, on a normal Les Paul, you can shut one pickup all the way off, leave the other one full, grab the switch and do the Randy Rose thing, that, you know, interrupter thing, right? Sounds really cool. But however, the way these two volumes are wired up is you can bring them right down to blend them. So you can have one, say, at seven, the other one at three, whatever, or one, and it'll still work. But the second you shut off one volume, both pickups shut off. doesn't matter which one you pick. The way they're wired is both volumes will shut off both pickups, but yet you can still blend. So as long as you don't shut uh, both pickups completely off, you always have... Uh, you know, you can always have, uh, you know, you know, sound, right? So I would like, I would have rather it be like two complete independent volumes where you shut one off, that pickup goes off, the other one stays on, whatever. That would have made more sense to me. So why they wired it like that, I don't know. It's not a deal breaker, but because I, I leave everything on 10. It's a metal guitar in my, fa you know, in my thing. But for you jazz guys or you guys that actually do want to, when you're recording to play around to see if you get some sweeter tones out of the, you know, these pickups are pretty hot. So you might want to dial them back a bit. Uh, you do have some blending options, but one option you don't have is you, you can't shut one pickup off without shutting off the other. So weird why LTD did it that way. No clue, but that's what they did. The tuners, the tuners are not the best. However, this guitar stays in tuning really well. Like, I mean, I hammer the crap. I might've only tuned this guitar maybe two or three times. Now, mind you, it doesn't leave my the room that it stays in. So we'll see how it does live. So unfortunately, I haven't done uh, played this guitar live yet to tell you exactly, you know, what it can and cannot do tuners wise. But they're not the smoothest tuners. They're kind of you know, I know there's a lot of extra string tension on there. Uh, strings are 10 to 74s or 76, 74s, 10 to 74, whatever. So they are heavier strings. So they're, they're you know, you can feel it, it, uh, the tension on, on the tuners. So they're not the smoothest tuners, but they do the job. Ain't really complaining, just something, right? If I have to fault it, uh, I'll fault it on that. Uh, the big thing, the big three things that will probably throw you off the eight string. And this is where I'm gonna add the caveat first. So you have this in mind as I'm telling you this. Uh, whenever you buy an instrument, you gotta spend, I, I go with what Billy Sheenan said about basses. When he, he, buys, he bought his first bass and it wasn't right for him and whatever, but after he spent time with it, things made more sense. And then when he went for his next bass, he, he made a much better choice. Uh, a lot of bass players will tend to basically buy a bass. Oh, this is not working for me. And then they go buy another bass. Oh, I love this bass. And then they find out they really don't love that bass. 
and then they buy another bass. Well, eight string guitars are kind of like that. Uh, seven strings don't seem to be that way, but the eight string does, where it's really, what it is is that you're not used to it and you have to spend time with it and it takes a while. The first problem I encountered playing this thing was that the muscle memory of my hand, uh, you know, hooking up to my brain is always thinking six string, right? So when I want to play an E flat chord on this guitar, uh, or, or sorry, an A minor chord on this guitar in the first position, I end up hitting an E flat or something because my, 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 or if I go for the E, I hit the A minor because my, my hands are thinking center of the neck right? So intuitively, my hands go where the six string would be. So for the first little bit, I found, yeah, I could play the guitar, but if I really wanted to sound fluid or whatever, a lot of times I was landing on the center of the fret, not too bad, uh, which I expected with the longer scale, but it, that lasted maybe about a week. And then scale lengthwise, I seemed fine, but uh, width wise, that's where I found I was misfretting. So I'd go for a D minor chord up here and I'd end up somewhere... <laughs> You know, I completely missed the E and it was just, I make this weird chord. Like, well, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, so it felt like from here up, the guitar was playable. And from here down, it was a complete labyrinth and I couldn't really navigate it, even though I've been playing guitar, you know, since I was five and I'm 50 now. And that kind of really threw me off. And I'm like, well, at some point I'm going to pick up this guitar and be able to play it blindfolded. But that didn't happen until probably the last, last few weeks, so almost a year on before I really got used to it. And that is something that a new eight string player is probably gonna get thrown off by and maybe not like the eight string and say, okay, you know what, I can't play this thing. Uh, it's just too weird. Um, I can't play it well. I give up, sell it. Don't, spend more time with it. Because one day you're going to pick it up and when you do play this thing where you can feel like you could play it blindfolded, like if I pick up a Gibson SG, I can pretty much play those things blindfolded because I've been playing those guitars for pretty much all my life. Gibson scales pretty much all my life, right? And 25 and a half, I'm pretty much the same. But 26 and a half with the wider nut, is, a, is it's a new way of playing. You know, like it's a new uh, muscle memory that I have to learn. And going back and forth from all these different scale lengths kind of throws you off for a couple of months, even the stuff that you're used to, because, you know, it it, it takes a while for you to, to psychologically line your uh, muscle memory up to, you know, you know, like I'll play a neck as small as a violin and a mandolin and ukuleles up to the bass, you know, 34 and a half scale bass, right? And then, of course, this thing. And then this is wider than the bass neck, you know what I mean? So uh, it, I'm constantly playing different necks and I do get used to them. The bass, I find I have no problem because you've got big strings and they're pretty easy to hit. But with the guitar, the eight string, the, these strings are about even spaced as a normal, your normal six string guitar, but you've got a lot, you know, you got an extra almost inch and a half of guitar width there on the nut, right? Or whatever it is, an inch or whatever. And that's going to take you time to get used to. So for some of you, you're going to have a hard time with the, the scale length. Uh, give it time. The others, it's going to be the width. For me, it's the width. It, it just, it's not that I couldn't play the notes. It's just, I kept missing the notes. So my, you know, going for a B flat chord, I end up, you know, somewhere, somewhere else, you know, go for the E and I, you know, the high E and it was, it was weird, you know? Uh, but now I don't find it as weird and I'm starting to do these crazy jazz chords and stuff on it. And it's like, now the eight string is starting to make sense in standard tuning for me. Uh, that's why a lot of guys probably play these things in uh, drop tunings is just to make life that much easier. Why work harder than you have to? Because with the eight string, you're going to work harder. Now I'll make a, another part here. <laughs> 